Hi, welcome to our statics example of solving for numerous internal member forces on a truss just using the method of joints. So we've already introduced the method of joints in class, but now here's an example of how you can just move your joint window through the system without having to make section cuts. We're going to use the same example that we used in class, and so you can already see that we have drawn the free body diagram of our system. We also found our support reactions, and remember, in class, we said that you find your support reactions by treating the truss like a solid beam. So I went ahead and drew an additional free body diagram with just a big solid chunk with our loads of 500 and 1500 pounds on it and our statics is shown there so we see our support reactions of 1167 pounds at dy our ay is 833 pounds and there is no horizontal reaction at x but our real goal in this problem is to find the internal forces for members af fc and ef and those are already marked on our main member on our main truss drawing and our goal for solving these is to go ahead and we just want to use the method of joints to find our internal forces. And we know when we're looking for internal forces, we gotta cut members open. Because if we don't have them cut open, all we can see is what's externally acting on the member. And to help us find those member forces, let's go ahead and also mark the members of interest on our free body diagram so we can come back to that. So Remember, we learned in class we do have to cut through the members. And we've said it's really important you just can't cut a member. You've got to cut through the entire truss. You can only cut through a member one time. Um, you don't cut through a joint. So these are all really important. And let's not waste time cutting through members that aren't of interest. Now, what we can do is use a joint window to help us make the cuts when we're doing method of joints. So we could come up and just look at a joint. Just look at a joint. And let's look at just joint F. I mean, that looks like a pretty good joint to look at because look at that. That cuts through all three members of interest. If we could just look at joint F alone, we'd have forces AF, force FB, force FC and force FE. We know the direction, their line of actions, because all those members are two force members. So they just have one load along their long axis or one force along their long axis. And so we know the direction, at least the line of action of that force. So that's great. But that means we have four unknowns. And at no time in 2D equilibrium do we ever get four equations of equilibrium. So that's already a problem. But even more so, since all of those forces act along the members, all of the forces are going to pass through point F, which means they're all concurrent to point F. So none of them has a moment about F. Point F cannot create moment resistance. So we actually don't even have three equations of equilibrium, but we only get Two. So we don't want to have our joint window there. So instead, we could start looking at some other places. I could come down here to B, but shoot, that has three unknowns, and C has four unknowns, and E has three unknowns. D is looking a little better. It only has two unknowns because it's going to have D, F, and D, C, and I know D, Y, but I don't want to know D, C, or D, E, excuse me, not D, F, D, E, but I could come over and look at joint A, and that's starting to look a little bit better because I know AX and AY, and my only two unknowns would be AF and AB. And AF is actually a member of interest to us, so that makes more sense to make our cut at A than it does to make our cut at D, just to be efficient. All right, so take a look at that joint window, and what we want to do is we're going to draw that same window so let's go ahead and draw what's happening over at joint A and let's quickly draw it and then we can stop and talk about it. And notice we didn't just draw the joint, we drew the entire force or the, we cut through the members and then drew the forces on the members and of course our support reaction at A. And we should notice that all those forces pass right through point A. So that means that this is going to be a concurrent force system. 
And if it's a concurrent force system, again, how many equations of equilibrium do we get? How many? Yeah, that's right. We get two equations of equilibrium, and neither one of them is a moment expression. So we only get to some forces in the x equal to zero and some forces in the y equal to zero. Now, before we do any of our statics, let's make sure that we're comfortable with what's on the free body diagram here. So again, we have our joint and we have a little bit of member AF and a little bit of member AB. We have our forces that are along the lines of actions of those members because they're two force members. And again, going back to the rules we established in class, we don't know whether those members are in tension or compression. We don't know what direction those arrows should be pointing. We just know they have to point along the line of the members. So we're just going to assume they're in tension. And remember what tension means. It means it's pulling. We're either going to be pushing in compression or pulling in tension. It's not about does the arrow go up, down, left, or right. It's is it pulling or pushing. And so we're going to assume tension and pulling. Notice we also put some geometric information. The height of those truss bays are 12 feet and their width is 16 feet. So 12 over 16 is the same as 3 over 4. And fortunately, if we have a right triangle with sides 3 and 4, we know the hypotenuse is 5. And that's awesome because we can then just do ratios. We know that then the ratio of the horizontal component of force AF to, in comparison to actual force AF, is going to be the same as the ratio of 4 to 5. And we can do the same with the vertical. Now finally, we have to pick, we can only sum forces in the X or Y. Let's go ahead and sum forces in the Y first because that's going to be more efficient, folks. Because force AB and force AF both have an X component. If we sum forces in the X first, that just gives us one equation with two unknowns. Only force AF has a Y component, so let's be efficient and go there first. So we'll sum our forces in the Y equal to zero. Let's pick up as a positive direction just to give us, you know, we've got to pick something to add things together. And let's get that right. Three-fifths is the vertical component, so three-fifths of force AF plus our 833 pounds is going to give us that force AF is equal to a negative 1,388 pounds. Is it bad that it's negative? No! Just a means we assumed the wrong direction, so our, our 1,388 pounds is in compression for our force AF. Great, we've got one of our members of interest. But let's go ahead and sum forces in the x equal to zero. We can assume to the right is positive just for the sake of adding together like arrows and subtracting unlike arrows. So we're going to have our four-fifths of force AF and on our free body diagram that horizontal component would be pointing to the right so we have a plus sign we have plus force AB also pointing to the right but when we go ahead and put in what force AF is going to be equal to well we found that force AF per our picture was equal to a negative 1300 so we want to put that negative whoops two arrows we want to put that negative 13 88 pounds in, and then plus our force AB, and that's going to lead us to that our force AB is going to be equal to 1,110 pounds. It's a positive number, so that arrow we picked correctly, and so we have 1,110 pounds in tension for our force AB. So now we're ready to look at another joint. So can we jump up now to joint F? Let's see. We now know force AF, so that took away one of our unknowns. Well, the problem is, is that we still have three unknowns because we don't know force FB, force FC, or force FE. And it certainly isn't going to do us a lot of good to keep going, you know, to go look at joint C. Still too many unknowns there, still too many unknowns. So let's go ahead and look over here at joint B. And if we look at joint B, it looks like it might have three unknowns, except for the fact that we just found force AB. So we have a joint now that only has two unknowns that's close 
to our members of interest that might just get us what we need. So let's go ahead and look in our joint window and see what we're going to draw. So we'll have sort of an upside down T with all of our member forces on it. So our joint B There's our joint and our three members, and we can draw our forces. We're going to assume tension for force BC. We know our 500 pounds is going down, and we have our force BF in tension. But we want to make sure that we understand why is the 1,110 pounds at B going to the left. So, <clears throat> remember, we said we draw tension as pulling and compression as pushing. So on joint A, a pulling force along member AB would have to be going to the right. But if I'm at joint B and I want to pull on joint B, my force has to go to the left. Both of them are pulling on that joint. So think about a rubber band. If you were to pull on two ends of a rubber band or hook your thumbs through and just pull, the entire rubber band would be in tension, but if you looked at your left hand, it's pulling to the left, and if you looked at your right hand, it's pulling to the right, equal and opposite. So if you were to draw free body diagrams of just the left or the right hand, the arrows would be in opposite directions, but the rubber band would still be in tension. So remember that. So as we look at this, again, we see we only have our two unknowns, force BF and force BC, and we have our two equations of equilibrium, summing forces in the x and summing forces in the y. And I hope by observation that you could just look at this problem and quickly see that if we sum forces in the x equal to zero, we would get back out that force BC is just 1,110 pounds and our assumed direction of tension was good. And if we did forces in the y, we would see our assumed direction of force BF was also good, tension, and it's 500 pounds. So that's some pretty easy statics to do on that problem. All right, so that didn't get us any of our members of interest, but it did give us enough information that now we could go up to our joint F and notice even though we have four members, we now know force AF and force FB. So we now only have two unknown forces, our force FE and force FC, at our joint F, we have two equations of equilibrium, we are golden. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> see what's going on. Let's draw our joint. So we have our four members coming into our joint. We have the forces acting. Let's fix our writing there. Now, force FE and force FC, we will assume our intention. We have our 500 pounds down. But then there is our 1388 pounds acting from member AF. And remember, we know that that is in compression. So we're going to draw it pushing into the joint now. So we write it as a positive 1388, but we show it pushing. If you drew it, if you wrote it as negative 1388, you better draw it pulling. All right. So again, we're going to have two equations of equilibrium that we're going to get, but we only have two unknowns, so that's pretty exciting. So we can solve this. And let's start by summing forces in the Y, so we only have to deal with member force FC. So our Y component of the 1388 is 3 fifths. Let's draw that geometry to help see that. And that's going to be positive because we're defining up as positive, and in this case, pushing on the joint is positive. We have minus 500 pounds and then minus 3 fifths of force FC. And that's going to lead us to force FC is 555 pounds in tension. And then we can continue our statics and sum our forces in the X direction. When we sum forces in the X, we're going to get that we have again positive 1,388 pounds, 4 fifths of that. We're going to have four-fifths of our force FC, also positive, and then we have plus force FE, it means force FE is going to have to be negative, which means force FE is 1,555 pounds in compression. 
So we have now found all of our member forces. We were able to just move our joint window around the member. If we wanted to keep moving it to find additional forces, we could. And that, folks, is how you use member method of joints to find internal member forces throughout a truss. Now you can check out the member of sections videos if you want to see how to use that to solve for any member forces in a truss. Thanks for watching.